So now we are going to discuss about uh, diffraction due to double slit. So we already discussed diffraction due to single slit. Now we are going to discuss about diffraction due to double slit. So due to double slit means two narrow slits separated by a small gap. The two narrow slits separated. The narrow slits let us say A, B, C, D. So A, B is the first slit and C, D is the second slit of size E. And now the gap between the two slits let us say B, C as D. So now A, B equals to C, D is equals to E and B, C is nothing but D. So, let us take the centers of the two slits, call that as uh, S1 and S2. The gap between S1 and S2 is E plus D. Because the slit size of AB is E and center E by 2 plus D and E by 2. So, total is E plus D. So, now Again, as usual, when a lighter incident on a slit, the lighters which are falling on the or passing through the gap between the slits will focus at the center of the screen and call that as P0 will give you a bright fringe because they are traveling without deviation. And now, whenever a lighter is incident on a slit and if they are diffracting with an angle of theta, like this, if they are traveling with an angle of deviation theta, we will focus at the other point on the screen. Let us call that as P1. So the point P1, whether the point P1 is bright or dark will depend on the path difference between the two light rays. So in order to calculate the path difference between two light rays, draw a perpendicular line from S1 to S2 line, call that as point K. So we have to calculate the path difference as to k, then we can calculate the path difference and phase difference. So in order to calculate the path difference of s to k, let us take the triangle S1 S2 K. So if you take the triangle 90 is at k, theta is at the S1, and this is S2. So S1 and S2 value is E plus D. Then we have to calculate S to K for so to calculate the path difference, apply sine theta to this term to this triangle. Then you can have sine theta equals to S to K by E plus D, and then S to K is equals to E plus D of sine theta. Then so this is the path difference S to K. Now, in order to calculate the phase difference, you have to multiply the path difference with the term 2 pi by lambda because if lambda is distance by wavelength or the length. Length term and distance term both will get cancelled, then you can have phase. So, in order to calculate the phase difference, you have to multiply the path difference with 2 pi by lambda. Then 2 pi by lambda of e plus d of sine theta. Then let us say this term pi by lambda of e plus d of sine theta as beta. So, pi by lambda of e plus d of sine theta, let us call that as beta. Then you can have pi equals to 2 beta. So since pi equals to 2 of 2 of pi by lambda of e plus d sin theta, we are assuming pi by lambda of e plus d sin theta as beta, then you can have phi is equals to 2 beta, which is more important one. And now this is a path difference and phase difference calculations. Now, if you take this particular diagram, the point P1 or on the screen, the resultant intensity or resultant amplitude on the screen is due to two slits, two single slits. This is one single slit and this is another single slit. As we already discussed, the resultant amplitude on a slit on a screen due to n number of SHMs with an amplitude A and a phase difference phi, then the total resultant amplitude on the screen is given by R equals to A sin alpha by alpha, which is a single slit equation. Similarly, on the screen we are having two slits here, each slit which contributes some intensity on the screen. So now, the resultant amplitude on the screen due to first slit, let us call that as R1. So on R1, A sin alpha by alpha. And due to second slit is R equals to A sin alpha by alpha because these two are derived from the same source. From a single source, these, these two are derived, that's why we are calling that as R1 and R2 both are same, but these two are from two different slits on a single screen. 
two different slits on a single screen. So the result intensity on the screen can be calculated with the help of parallelogram. Law of vectors. So the parallel the parallelogram law of vectors is if two sides are represented by the sides of a parallelogram, the resultant is along the diagonal side. Since R1 and R2 are the two sides of a parallelogram, resultant R, since the phase difference between the two uh, vectors is let us say phi, then the resultant R, since R1, R2, the resultant on the screen is R, can be calculated with the help of this formula under root, under R1 square plus R2 square plus 2R1, R2 cos phi. So R1 value is A sin alpha by alpha, R2 value also A sin alpha by alpha and substitute here. A square sin square alpha by alpha square plus A square sin square alpha by alpha square of 2 into A sin alpha by alpha plus into A sin alpha by alpha of cos phi. Then simplify this one and all the other term, the common term is A square sin square alpha by alpha square. Here also A into A square sin square alpha by alpha square. Take out the term and take it out from the square root. Then you can have a sin alpha by alpha. So under root the leftover terms are 1, 1, 2 of cos phi. So if you simplify that one a sin alpha by alpha under root 2 of 1 plus cos phi. Next a of under root sorry sin alpha by alpha under root 2 1 plus cos phi can be written as 2 of cos square phi by 2. Then a sin alpha by alpha into 2 of 2 uh, cos phi by 2. Since we are having phi as 2 beta, then beta equals to phi by 2. So phi by 2 can be written as beta. The term is r equals to 2 of 2 of a sin alpha by alpha into cos beta. So this is a resultant amplitude on the screen due to two slits, means double slit amplitude resultant amplitude so the intensity can be calculated easily square the amplitude then you can have i equals to r square 4a square of sin square alpha by alpha square into cos square beta so this is the intensity on the screen due to double state now if you clearly observe that one this term is due to intensity on the screen due to single slit because a square sin square alpha by alpha square and now this is due to interference term so why do we, whether it will give you interference or term interference condition or not now we are going to see but see if you think in a different manner it is similar to your double slit experiments Eng's double slit experiment because two slits are separated by a bit small gap. In the Eng's double slit experiment, the gap is very narrow, but here we are taking a bit more than that one. So anyhow, here two things are happening, both interference and diffraction. Interference is due to the bending of light at the edges of obstacle. And interference due to the, since light is spreading in all directions, here also light will spread here, here both will interfere together. And on the screen you can have, you can find both interference pattern and diffraction pattern. Now we are going to see, already we discussed about this, whether this will give you single set, how it will give you principal maxima, first order, second order, or principal maxima, first secondary maxima, second secondary maxima, already we discussed regarding this particular equation. So no need to discuss again. And now, but whether this is giving interference means bright and alternate to bright and dark conditions or not, we have to check now. So the resultant intensity on the screen is due to, or the resultant intensity on the screen due to two slits or double slit is i equals to 4a square sin square alpha by alpha square of cos square beta. In this one, sin square alpha by alpha square, a square sin square alpha by alpha square will give you uh, resultant intensity due to single slit and cos square beta will give you interference term of these two light rays which are interfering uh, from these two say states. So whether we have to check this one uh, we have we are going to check cos square beta will give you interference pattern or not. So now take the condition for maximum means if cos square beta is maximum is maximum means uh, 
then cos square beta is maximum means cos beta should be plus or minus 1. So then cos square beta is 1, so which is maximum value. Uh, and then beta equals to plus or minus m pi. So already we discussed uh, about beta value, beta equals to pi by lambda of e plus d sin theta. Initially we derived pi by lambda of e plus d sin theta is equals to plus or minus m pi. Pi pi will get cancelled then e plus d of sin theta is equals to plus or minus m lambda. So nothing but path difference is equals to plus or minus m lambda. So which is a bright condition. It's a bright condition. So that means the cos square beta term will give you maximum value means bright one. Suppose whether it is giving minimum means dark or not we have to see. So minimum means cos beta should be zero. So if cos beta should be zero then beta equals to plus or minus 2m plus 1 of lambda by 2. So beta value is then uh, beta value uh, beta is uh, pi by lambda of e plus d of sin theta is equals to plus or minus 2m plus 1 of uh, sorry uh, pi by 2 pi by 2 so for this values it will become 0 so it is pi by 2 pi pi will get cancelled then you can have e plus d of sin theta equals to plus or minus 2a plus 1 of lambda by 2. That means the path difference is plus or minus 2a plus 1 of lambda by 2 which will give you minimum value. This so means dark. Here it is bright. Means dark. So for every value of m is 0 you will get bright. m is 1 by 2. I means lambda by 2. Uh, lambda by 2 if m is 0 so 0 uh, means then you can have lambda by 2 for lambda by 2 you are getting dark next m is 1 lambda you are getting bright La uh, 3 lambda by 2 if m is 1 1 uh, 2 plus 1 3 3 lambda by 2 you are getting dark next 4 you are getting alternate to bright and dark pages if you have it out just see if it is 0 m is 0 then you can have 0 bright next uh, path difference is path difference is 0 you are getting bright path difference is lambda by 2 you are getting dark next path difference is lambda you are getting bright path difference is uh, 3 lambda by 2 you are getting dark next uh, path difference is 2 lambda you are getting bright next 5 lambda by 2 you are getting dark so you are getting alternate to bright and dark like this see here so like that uh, this cos square beta term will give you interference condition on the screen so if you plot a graph for individually this is the graph for a square sine square alpha by alpha square so in due to single slit and this is for cos square beta term maximum minimum maximum minimum maximum minimum alternate to bright and dark so these two are together forming a intensity pattern on the screen so will look like this finally this will overlap on this one so if it overlap on that one see this is interference pattern This is your interference pattern. So whenever this single slit will overlap on that one. So you can have the interference pattern here. This part will be cut off. So the air curve and in this part also you can have interference that will be overlapped. Interference pattern is overlapped by single slit because here diffraction pattern is dominant than the interference pattern. Because we are taking a large gap here. Now instead of a small gap we are taking a large gap. That's why diffraction pattern is dominated than interference pattern. 
So this single slit diffraction will overlap on interference pattern. Finally, it will give you like this. But on the screen, how we can see? Let's see. So this is uh, this is the central maxima, first secondary maxima, second secondary maxima. All these are minimas. So on the screen here you can have interference fringes we can have. So like this alternative bright and dark fringes you can have. So this is the thing that we can observe on the screen like this. Principal maxima, first secondary maxima, second secondary maxima, first secondary maxima, second secondary maxima on either sides. This is your principal maxima which is having more intensity, less intensity than principal maxima, less intensity than first secondary maxima. Like this you can, one can observe the uh, interference fringes and single set diffraction together on a screen due to double set. So this is a complete discussion about uh, double set.